So, if we go a little bit more deeply into the different forms symbols can uh, take. So, a symbol can be written and of course it can be written very simply in black and white but it can also be constructed using different colors or different materials. When we do this it becomes actually quite a different effect we can create. So every material has a specific vibration or can link to a different energy source. So different colors relate to different chakras and also they relate to different planets in the same way different stones and different metals can relate to different planets. So the symbol in itself can be made for instance from iron, from silver, from gold and even though the shape will be similar the level of vibration it works upon will be quite different. So a symbol you could say is a mold but by using a different material you can get that mold to imprint upon a different energetic layer. It's also the same, you can write on paper, you can write on silk, you can carve into wood, you can carve into bone, um, you can carve into stone. And also depending on the material you use to hold the symbol, also the vibration of the symbol will exist on a different level and therefore will have a slightly different effect. Besides creating symbols which are outside of ourselves and have an impact upon uh, the people who connect with it, so you could say a symbol is a kind of a, um, a solidified energy. Energy is all around us, is flowing all around us, but it's usually a little bit too ephemeral for people to notice. By creating a symbol, you're in a way crystallizing the energy into a very specific constellation and by in a way allowing people to touch it or to feel it uh, people can make contact with the energy in that very specific constellation and this is how many symbolical objects or holy objects actually work and holy symbols work energy is set in a very specific constellation and therefore it has a very specific effect upon the people. Also because a symbol tends to be yeah, quite rigid and quite strong, it tends to imprint itself upon the people seeing it or touching it. So it is in a way um, overwriting the existing uh, states or the existing flows in the energy body. This also brings us to more internal symbols. Um, one way to do that is by using mudras, which are hand gestures, or hatas, which are body postures. And something like this can be a very static thing. You can remain in a very specific state or posture or in a very specific hand gesture. But they can also be mobile or flexible, like by moving in a certain rhythm or by moving in a certain way. Uh, this can be, for instance, mimicking an animal or an element um, and thereby we can also connect to that animal or element. So this is very symbolical movements we can make. And in this case the thing we are writing upon is not a piece of bone or skin, but it's actually our own bodies. So we're in a way using the symbol to imprint upon our being so our whole being will move into a different state of being and also reflect outward that symbol once more to everybody we touch or everybody uh, who sees us. Then there is a third form of using symbols and that's to use mantras. And mantras are a little bit of um, you could say the odd one out. Um, because in general most symbols are quite um, yeah, um, 
relatively low or heavier vibrations which really fall into the realm of the of the form cosmos not the formless cosmos and mantras actually reach much higher or they can reach much higher if they if you're using magical language rather than a more modern language the more modern languages tend to manifest into the form cosmos but mantras tend to manifest in the formless cosmos so a mantra is therefore also able to affect formless things uh, such as our our spirit, uh, our karma, um, um, future incarnations, things like this. So there is a lot of power in mantras, uh, but that also makes a mantra a very dangerous and tricky thing to try to use. Um, because if your consciousness is not quite there, you cannot control it. Um, then you have kind of a stamp, but you cannot really um, control what you're putting your stamp upon when you're uh, chanting that mantra, when you're working with that mantra. So the best thing to do is also, if you are working with your mantra, always connect to your guru um, or a saint or a deity who is either connected to that mantra who may have given this mantra to humanity or in case of a more personal relationships such as with your guru uh, who has given this mantra to you and by connecting with a being who can actually control this mantra they can compensate a little bit for your own lack of awareness or lack of skill in working with that mantra so before working with mantra I tend to try to yeah, connect with a higher being um, who has the ability to uh, to work with this energy in a more skillful way than I can. Um, in this respect it's also important to note that some mantras are higher than deities. Um, so it's actually possible using certain mantras to command deities. So depending on the mantra you're using um, working with your uh, your deity may actually not be enough to gain complete control over that mantra. Um, so I, it's my in general my opinion that people are using mantras um, rather inexpertly, and fortunately, usually nothing happens because they fail to make a connection with the energy of the mantra. Um, so they're just pronouncing the sounds and of course there's a positive effect because of their own personal associations but they're actually working more on the lower levels more in the collective consciousness level rather than on the true mantra level but it is possible to work with uh, with mantras in their more essential form but um, it's also important to note that things you do on a mantra level they're um, very very difficult to undo uh, if at all possible so mantras tend to be a little bit of a one-way traffic while working with symbols in general you can yeah change the form of something and then change the form back because you're just working in the form cosmos not in the formless cosmos um, for different people there are different ways which are most beneficial for them. Some people are very good with their voice, so they like to, to sing, to pray out loud, um, to chant, and this is their method. Other people are very good with their body, they have very good muscle control, they are very good at movements, so they can use their bodies to reflect these energies. And other people are more um, sculptors or um, graphical artists so they like to mold or to um, to chip away things or to paint or to draw and ultimately the skill which is strongest in you what your spirit is most attuned to will be the best yeah, thing for you to manifest your um, your symbols with uh, so for me it is it is touch. So my preferred way of working with symbols is in a way to just draw them onto the skin and by doing this um, 
the area underneath, which I'm writing on, gets imprinted with the symbol. And if you're using healing symbols this way, um, you can yeah, create some very positive effects. It's also possible to initiate people by drawing symbols on their bodies. And in a way, the art of yeah, tattoo, it's also drawing symbols on the bodies to create a kind of a permanent imprint which will allow that symbol to continually impress itself upon the, the fabric of the body. So I hope yeah, I've given you at least a little bit of insight and if you're interested in this you can of course yeah, study more in-depth experiment with different materials, colors and forms to see if the symbol you're using, how you can move it into different frequencies, into different realms uh, to see where it will be most effective for your specific purpose.